Absolutely. And so, and, and just to, um, to underline this, I mean, we're really focused, you're not necessarily focused on people's, um, just on their ideology, because certainly somebody could have uh, a certain gripe with the law or something, but it's that, uh, um, it's that you know a, n ability, but also a drive to actually conduct violence or to break laws, and that's really what we're focusing on. Correct. Okay. Um, so what you look at are these extremist ideology belief systems. You understand the belief system because that's where the mindset and the motivation for mm -hmm. the criminal activity uh, is generated from. Uh, but we're not just pulling things out of a vacuum. These are movements that have been here for decades, who have long established histories of spawning violence and criminal activity. So when, you know, as a Homeland Security analyst or when I worked at ATF, uh, you know, we're looking at groups and movements that are violating, you know, federal firearms and explosives laws, that are committing acts of arson, uh, that are shooting people, uh, targeting faith-based communities, uh, you know, vandalizing places of worship, things of this nature. What are some of the uh, recruitment strategies um, that these, I, I realize there's a, a variety of uh, ideologies and cells that you look at, um, and the problem set just seems humongous and, and possibly growing and changing all the time, but are there uh, recruitment strategies that you found um, that are common to uh, more than one group? Yeah, um, like you said, the different movements have kind of their unique brand of uh, recruiting strategies. We'll start out with uh, like the animal rights and uh, environmental extremists. Uh, they tend to target uh, you know, students uh, at colleges and universities. They get them involved in student activities and, and groups like that and then they start indoctrinating them with you know, films showing animal abuse and things of this nature. And then eventually person uh, might be introduced to a member of the Animal Liberation Front or Earth Liberation Front. And so those types of groups tend to be more focused on academic communities, young adults, impressionable youth. Uh, on the far right, uh, the militia movement tends to target people that come from military backgrounds or people that have been involved in police work. Uh, because of the way they're structured and how they're organized and the tr type of training that they use, these are the types of individuals that they like to target for recruitment. On the white supremacist side, they're looking for people that you know have been, you know, laid off of work or victimized in some way by a minority uh, and so they're looking for a target to look to unleash their anger or their uh, the resentment that they have for losing a job or maybe you know they had gotten a fight in a, at a bar or something like that and so they've had some personal life experience where they've been victimized by someone of another race and they want to blame that entire race on their troubles uh, on the sovereign citizen side uh, these are individuals who don't uh, adhere to any of the federal, state, or local laws. They want to emancipate themselves from being a U.S. citizen. Uh, they don't pay their taxes. They commit all man manner of white-collar crime. They target government officials for uh, threats and harassment. Uh, these types of individuals, they like to target vulnerable populations such as people that are in financial distress, someone who's lost their home or is about to go under financially because they can't pay their credit cards off. Uh, they're also looking for people that are just gullible or who just have some anti-government uh, sentiment and so they prey upon these people and draw them into more hardline extremist groups. So as you can see, the playing field's wide and the recruitment strategies vary greatly from group to group. I see. Um, is the, uh, it sounds like, I mean you already spoke to some of the vulnerable populations um, and really the radicalization processes as well. And it seems to me like there's a lot, you know, and, and certainly from reading from what I've read from your book, again, Right Wing Resurgence uh, by Daryl Johnson, um, I found a lot of insights actually into my analysis with Al Qaeda and with the Taliban and looking at other groups overseas. I see a lot of similar strategies, especially with the, uh, the, leader, uh, the leaderless um, sort of uh, uh, tactics, or as you say, the uh, leaderless resistance. Uh, that the French resistance used uh, during World War II, which I find absolutely fascinating. And there's, uh, it seems that at least uh, overseas, uh, transnational gangs as well as uh, elements of Al Qaeda are moving more and more towards this uh, as a means of force protection and sometimes as a means as the only way uh, to not be detected by authorities. Again, Daryl Johnson, really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for making the time for us at the Stability Institute. Um, and again, we've gotten a lot of questions about, you know, how applications 
of the strategies and methods that we've development professionals and stability professionals overseas have learned how they can be applied to domestic communities and vice versa and how folks you know that work with ATF Homeland Security Immigration Customs Enforcement for example uh, what they can teach um, the folks uh, serving in stability operations and contingency operations overseas and I think there's a lot uh, a lot of learning to be done here uh, and again, if you guys, I really recommend um, getting on Amazon, uh, checking out this book, Right Wing Resurgence. We'll do a book review in some later date and another interview on it. Um, it definitely opened my eyes to in a lot of different uh, sides of the bureaucratic as well as the analytic um, aspects of violent extremism uh, in the homeland, domestic terrorism. Um, and again, if you guys want to get in touch with Daryl, if you guys have questions, uh, if you guys want a uh, particular class or consulting, certainly get right in touch with his company, DT Analytics. Um, Daryl, thanks again for coming. I, I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, all of you out there, if you guys aren't already a member, please sign up, become a member. Becoming a member allows us to do more of these great videos and bring these videos to you for free. Uh, please check out also our services and products. There's a lot of good content out there um, and that, uh, that can be very useful for you and your office. Uh, thanks so much. And Daryl, let's do this again soon, okay? I appreciate it. Hey, you're welcome. And thanks to the Stability Institute for having me on the show. And thanks to Howard Clark. And if anybody wants to get in touch with me, if you need any training, please hit me up on my website. You can email me at daryl at dtanalytics.org.